Hey everyone, Adam here from Fishy Business. Just thought I'd share a quick look at my new 1550 Fisher Stabycraft, which is going to be one of the new boats we use in the show this season. As with any boat, one of the key elements is a trailer. When you're towing around as much as I do, you need to uh, be able to rely on your trailer. I've got the 1550 mounted on a DMW Premier trailer. It's a multi-roller trailer, ideal tows really well. And one thing with the DMW, they've all got alloy wheels and good tires, very essential. The Stabycraft 1550 Fisher hull is what we've come to see in Stabycraft, the pontoon alloy hulls. They're really good, they're really stable at rest. Um, they're actually positive buoyancy, which means you can fill them up with water and water will actually spill out of the boat if they're full. So very, very safe and um, you feel like you're fishing in a much bigger boat when you're in one of these hulls. But the 15 Fisher would probably be one of Stabycraft's most popular selling boats. It's a good transition from the little tinny into a medium sized boat. One of the optional extras is an amount for the electric motor. I haven't mounted it yet. I'm going to put a water snake geo spot on here, but it runs on a 12 volt battery and it's got about 55, 60 pound thrust and only draws 50 amps. So very, very good for a boat of this size. The 1550 Fisher is packed with features and optional extras. I'll show you how I've got mine set up. Some of it's standard, some of it's optional extras, but you can always check the Stabycraft website to see how you'd set yours up. I've got the canopy with the rocket launcher at the top, really, really good. The nice thing about these is you can fold them away, so if you want to store the boat in a garage, it's very easy to do so. The other attractive feature of the 1550 Fisher is the front lift-up screen. Everyone likes this, it's really good for anchoring and also for deploying electric motors. Easy as that. Powering the 1550 Fisher, I've got a Mercury 60 horsepower four stroke command thrust engine and the command thrust basically it gives you a little bit more low end torque it's a real workman like engine which is perfect for what I do when it comes to steering and controlling a boat I'm a real fan of hydraulic steering so I've got sea star mounted on the back makes it nice and easy when you're controlling your boat nothing worse than heavy duty steering so at the helm station starting with the marine electronics I've got the Lowrance HDS 9, which is a nine inch screen. It's a pretty big sounder, but it's ideal for this boat. It's a sounder that's packed with features. I say sounder, it's actually a GPS chart plotter as well. And it has lots of other functionality that you can add to it. It's also got a very, very powerful processor. So it works really well. And the main thing is it's got a beautiful screen. From a safety point of view, obviously I've got a Lowrance Marine VHF radio. I've also got a fire extinguisher and a first aid kit and flares. I carry a, a personal locator beacon on most of my boats so that's uh, with me all the time. The other nice little feature is I've mounted a USB and a 12 volt charger underneath here so it's out of harm's way. Great for charging phones and charging batteries when you need to. The seats are good fold down seats, nice and heavy. They pivot as well. And underneath I've got a, a large IC Tech fish bin on the passenger's side or the port side and that's also got a squab on it on the back of the captain's seat there's a fold down for another passenger there so this boat can easily accommodate four people the business end of most boats for me is the stern not the bow because that's where i spend most of my time and what i've set up here i've got a removable bait board i've got a live bait tank which will accommodate baits up to a kilo probably half a dozen live baits up to a kilo a wash down as you can see the stabycraft comes with plenty of rod holders and drink holders which are really really good and i've also got a dual battery bank i use one for my marine electronics and i use one for my start battery and you use a deep cycle for your marine electronics i've also got a third battery mounted in the bow which is set up for the new electric motor when i put it on you'll also see i've got a scotty downrigger i'm a big fan of downrigger fishing and i wouldn't go out with a boat without one as you can see, the gunnels are pretty good for sitting on, and there's also plenty of room for storing gear underneath. I've put some lightweight uh, rubber matting under there just to stop anything from sliding around and getting knocked around. On the floor, we've got the U-Deck foam floors, and they're fantastic because they absorb a lot of shock. They also deaden the noise of, of boats when you're banging around. Also, the pontoons in this boat are foam filled, which also deadens the noise. They say, yeah, you know, they talk about flotation and things like that. You don't need that in the Staby craft, but it definitely makes it uh, a lot quieter. We're running on tote tanks in this boat because it's an inshore harbour, not travelling too far boat, so you're not going to use a lot of gas. And the Command Thrust Mercury doesn't use a lot anyway. And uh, if you want more fuel, you can always bring an extra tank, and that'll give you a huge range. 
At the stern we have a boarding ladder for divers or people getting on and off the boat with a grab rail, makes life nice and easy. It's also easy to uh, jump off the side if you're a diver from the boat, it's very, very easy. They're a great boat to fish out of, they're very comfortable and they're built like a boat that, that seems a lot, lot bigger than what they really are. So we've named the 1550 Stabycraft Fisher the Sardine. It's a boat that's packed with features and here at Fishy Business we're really looking forward to getting out on the water and having some massive adventures in this little rig.